Gary Phillips, you're up first. Please unmute. Hey, Marcus, Gary Phillips with the Daily News here. Congratulations and welcome back home. Um, it's been reported that you and Brian Cashman met face to face in Tampa before signing. Uh, I'm just curious, how did that meeting come about and what exactly did you guys go over? Yeah, it was, it was on the phone. Um, wasn't wasn't face to face. Um, I ended up meeting with Booney came over, Aaron Boone came to my home uh, throughout the process, had a few calls with some of the guys on the team, a few texts with some guys on the team. Um, but yeah, me and Cashman kind of hashed out uh, whatever it was that we had from a few years ago. We kind of laughed about it and and we moved on. He let me know how interested he was in me as a pitcher, um, thought that I was someone who would kind of thrive in the lights and the pressure. And I thought it was a perfect fit. Who were some of the other guys that reached out to you? Yeah, I talked to Judge, Cole. Uh, I talked to Volpe a bit, Rizzo. Um, and then, yeah, obviously Cash and Booney, mainly. Gotcha. Thank you. We can go next to Jack Curry. Hey, Marcus, good to see you. Jack Curry from the S Network. Across the last few days, you've expressed a lot of excitement and a lot of enthusiasm about becoming a Yankee. How would you describe what the Yankees are getting in Marcus Stroman? Oh, I mean, someone who's going to compete to the highest level, someone who prepares to the highest degree, uh, a great teammate, someone who shares knowledge with, with everyone within the organization, someone who loves to learn. Um, I already talked to Garrett a bit. I can't wait to just kind of be around the guys. And I feel like I'm someone who adapts very easily and I'm able to take bits and pieces from other people's games and kind of put it into my game. So I'm I'm just excited to learn from 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 guys like Garrett Cole, who's been one of the greats in the game, Rodone, who's been elite for many years, um, Nestor, who's a guy who kind of mess, messes around with timing. Clark Schmidt is a guy with a ton of upside who's got incredible stuff. So as far as the staff, it's it's going to be, I think we have one of the better staffs out there, and it's just going to be the ability to share knowledge between each other and kind of learn and adapt. I'm, I'm just excited for all that. Thank you. We can move next to Brian Hoke. Hey, Marcus, you mentioned the thing from a few years ago when the Yankees didn't trade for you. What did you need to hear from Cashman? How did you guys clear that up? It was quick, man. It was quick, you know. It was the uh, we literally laughed about it, you know. He 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 let me know his his quick little piece um about how it didn't necessarily come out is essentially how he wanted it to. He let me know that I was someone who he thought was always going to be a good competitor, someone who could handle the lights, someone who thrived in the pressure, and that was kind of the ultimate draw, you know what I mean? Um I'm not someone who shies away from the limelight or pressure or the lights. I think a lot of guys would avoid avoid coming to New York and, and playing for the Yankees because because of that reason. And I'm someone who, like I said, I feel like it it brings out the best in me. So I'm looking forward to this opportunity. I think Cash is is kind of right there um, in agreement with me as far as he thinks it's going to be um, a good situation for the both of us. And, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm excited. Obviously, I grew up from Long Island. I grew up going to Yankee games and and to be able to put on the pinstripes, that's that's something we all dream about as kids. So I can't wait. Bruce Beck, please unmute. Hey, Marcus, Bruce Beck, NBC4, New York. Welcome back. Uh, what do you expect your relationship to be with the fans and what do you think of the New York fans in general? Man, the New York fans are the most you know, uh, passionate fan groups probably in the world. You know, like I said, I grew up there. I'm from there. I understand that um, playing there, it's 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 all about your performance and, and how you come on the field. And like I said, I'm someone who I feel like the pressure and the lights, it, it brings out the best of me. So I'm excited. I'm excited to feel the energy of, of New York Yankee, the, the crowd, the buzz. I think my start days is something that I'm getting chills kind of thinking about looking forward to. So, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait because I, I know the pressure and the lights that it comes with. And like I said, I'm someone that um, I only feel like I thrive in those moments. Thank you. You go next to Brendan Cuddy.
Marcus, my name is Brendan Cuddy. I'm with The Athletic. Uh, thank you for taking the time and congratulations on the deal. Two questions. First, last year you finished the season uh, a little iffy health-wise uh, with the, I think, the rib and the hip. Where are things now? No, I'm perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to rock, man. You know, I'm four or five bullpens in. Body feels great. Body feels great. I'm fully healed. Everything feels uh, brand new. So just excited to get out there and compete. Also, thank you. Also, do you feel like you're misunderstood at all by fans, by the media, by just people who watch baseball? And if so... Yeah, yeah, I'd say I'm misunderstood for sure, you know? Um, In what ways? That's that's another reason why I'm excited to to, to be a Yankee, you know? I think people will have a, a, a different view of me after my tenure here. I don't think Cash, I don't think Booney, I don't think Judge would, would want me to be a part if they didn't know my character and how I was as a teammate. So I'm excited. Like I said, I'm excited for this opportunity. I can't wait to learn from all the guys and I can't wait to compete. Competing is something I do to the highest level. And when it comes to put my body and my mind in, in, in the ultimate position, that's something that I'm always working on, whether it be at the field or away from the field. So yeah, I can't, I can't wait to go out there and compete and put the pinstripes on. Thank you. Then go to Greg Joyce, please unmute Greg. Hey, Marcus, this is uh, Greg George from the New York Post. Curious, you, you were just saying uh, you, you think they might have a different view of you after your ten tenure. What What is kind of your goal of that view uh, of what you want to accomplish here, kind of on and off the field? Oh, no goal, just for people to understand the real me. Um, I just feel like when people understand the real me and get around me and really get to know me, um, they understand um, the human being that I am deep down. So. Like I said, I, I, I'm pretty sure the Yankees uh, done their research in the, in the process and they wouldn't reach out or even want this partnership um, if they didn't know about my character as a human being, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to to be a Yankee. I'm excited, like I said, to, to go out there and compete in the Bronx and perform in the Bronx. I think it's the hardest thing to do. But like I said, there's nothing. I'm someone who's always wanted a challenge and someone who's always up for a challenge. So I think it's just a, a, a match made in heaven. Thanks. Peter Splendorio, go ahead. Hi, Marcus. It's Peter Splendorio with the New York Daily News. I'm interested to know just kind of what this process was like for you this offseason. Just at what point did you kind of start talking to the Yankees or identify them as a possible fit? And how did this kind of come together um, at, at that point, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, I was very open in the process, obviously. Um, I was just going about my off-season routine as is. And, yeah, my, my agent reached out to me and said the Yankees reached out. And, I mean, automatically, I said I would definitely – he asked me if I would be open to it, and I said, yeah, for sure. Um, just because, like I said, I know how much the lights and the pressure is kind of existent there, and I'm someone who enjoys that pitching kind of in that moment each and every five days, so – I live in Tampa. My home's in Tampa, so spring training is essentially a 10-minute drive. So as far as fit, um, my brother's at IMG Academy, which is also close by now as well. It just couldn't be a better fit um, at this point in my career. Randy Miller, you look very comfortable. Please unmute. Hi, Marcus. Randy Miller, NJ.com, New York Star Ledger. Uh, when you look at last year, you had a 2.28 ERA through June 20th. Your last 11 outings, 8.29. Uh, how much of that was hip-related? What went wrong in the second half? And what do you think you are capable of? Uh, you say you think the Bronx is going to bring the best out of you, playing with a great lineup, other pitchers. Can you be better than you than you ever been? Yeah, yeah, I, I do think the best is still in me. So like you said, um, Sometimes when 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 you have those those moments in that city and that buzz and that energy and and that pressure, it brings out a, a different animal. So I'm I'm excited for that possibility. My body's in in incredible um, um shape now. I battled a few injuries at the at the end of last year, but I mean at the beginning of last year, I, I think I was one of the best pitchers in baseball. So when I'm healthy, I would put myself as one of the best pitchers up in baseball, always in the game and. Like I said, I feel healthy. I'm, I'm I'm ready to go. My body's in the best position it's been, and I'm just excited to honestly just go out there and compete at this point. Those poor numbers at the end of last year, though, was that health-related where you were trying to pitch through things and it ended up 
affecting your numbers and and what was it that was affecting you that that uh, hurt you yeah yeah i had a little hip injury um a little hip injury that i ended up coming back from and right when literally the day i threw my bullpen and i was coming back um i had a a, a rib thing that's fully healed now um yeah it's just battling a few things you know what i mean then trying to get back as quick as possible so just a bunch of things kind of kind of working against me ever since um I kind of went on that in the second half pretty much but like i said when i was healthy in the first half i was kind of on a roll there was a stretch in there um where i threw my load probably got a little too high and i probably didn't um get the work that i probably need to and i ended up needing to take like um a little break and then it was just yeah just kind of spiraled after that but yeah i'm someone who's able to put my body in the best position and my off season was was incredible this year and I'm looking forward to going out there and throwing 30, 33, 34 starts um, each and every year. Thank you. Steven Zatolo, please unmute. Marcus Steven Zatolo, News 12, The Bronx in Brooklyn. Last week, you posted a picture of you in a Yankee hoodie as a young boy. Just what would that child think about this opportunity right now? Now you're, you have the opportunity to start the Yankees at Yankee Stadium, possibly into the into the playoffs. Obviously, everyone hopes that. So, what would that young boy think of this opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I, I get the chills thinking about my first start at Yankee Stadium. To be honest with you, um, I think kids not even only from New York. I think kids worldwide, growing up, just dream about being in the pinstripes or playing for the Yankees. You know, so. Um, yeah, it's hard to put into words. It's something that I can't wait to feel, to be honest with you, in the moment. And obviously to have my family there, for them to be able to drive from from back home and to have kind of the people from my childhood be able to be there and present. It's just like kind of just puts like a lot of emotions, um, a lot of different emotions uh, kind of come to the surface. So I can't wait, man. I can't wait. It's hard for me to, I, I'm someone who pitches off kind of the energy and, and the buzz of a crowd. So uh, I can't wait for those those days on, on, on my start day. Go to John Schwartz. Hey, Marcus, uh, John Schwartz, Yankees Magazine. Uh, just to follow up right there, you mentioned that you like pitching in that bright light in a sense. What is it about that attention that you feel brings out the best side of you is there a specific feeling that you're chasing kind of uh as you approach that start i'm someone who just i just like the nerves and the the you know the lead up the anxiety of it the nerves i feel like i'm able to just lock it in at a different level than most um i feel like i'm able to keep a calm out there when when things are kind of uh, going crazy, I feel like I'm able to keep a level of, of calm. I feel like I'm able to lower my heart rate. I feel like my breathing is great. So I feel like I'm able to kind of really zone in in moments like that. And like I said, I, I think as kids and, and growing up, it's like, I think that's what we strive for. I think it's like we want to be in that moment. I think a lot of people shy away from it, you know, because it's scary or or, or it can be fearful for a lot of people. But I'm someone who will walk into that moment um, and take that pressure, whether it go good or bad, because I need to feel it. You know, I just need to feel it. I'm not someone who can kind of coast through life. I'm someone who accepts any challenge. And that's how I was raised from my father, from my mother. That's how I was built. And that's how um, that's how I'll continue to walk through life. You're next to Bob Clappish. Hey, Charles, Bob Clappish from the Star Ledger in Jersey. Um, I wanted to ask you about that great sinker that you throw and how important it is in Yankee Stadium to not be a fly ball pitcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the sinker's my, my bread and butter. That's um, that's kind of a pitch that's that's made me into the pitcher that I am throughout my career. I came into the league not even having that pitch and kind of found it a few years in. And um, I think it's, it's held me at the top ground ball percentage in the league when I'm out there, you know what I mean? pretty high up there routinely so yeah I'm confident I'm a confident pitcher so um, when it comes to throwing my sinker I feel like my sinker my best sinker against the best swing I'm usually going to keep it on the ground or I'm going to be able to limit damage so when it comes to being able to pitch with my fastball um, in the zone I do it very confidently I'm not someone who shies away from the zone I feel like I can get out in the zone with my sinker 
and all my other pitches kind of essentially play off of that pitch. But I feel like I have a lot more weapons than just a sinker, which hitters have to kind of worry about, which allows my sinker to play up. Um, so going into any start on any given day, you know, I might be displaying a different percentage of pitches just depending on how I'm feeling in that start. So that sinker, I, I would think it would give you an advantage over other pitchers who, I mean, a mil especially in Yankee Stadium where you're going to be making most mm -hmm. majority of your starts. I, I can't count the number of times I've seen a pitcher turn around and throw up his hands in, in disbelief that a routine fly ball to right is now a home run in Yankee Stadium. And yeah. that, it looks like you wouldn't have, wouldn't have to worry about that as much. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the game, you know? That's 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 the dimensions of the stadium. I'm not someone who... who I'm I'm more worried about the pitch that I made rather than the swing or rather than the result, you know, right. and so it's, it, it, it always ends up being the pitch. So I'm not someone who dwells. I'm not someone who makes excuses. It's, it's usually on me and I'm someone who kind of will grab the ball and, and, and move on to the next pitch. But yeah, I think my my repertoire does match well for Yankee Stadium as far as uh, throwing my sinker and being able to keep the ball on the ground. We got a great defense, great infield defense. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity. All right. Thank you. Go next, go next to Max Goodman. Hey, Marcus. Great to meet you. Max Goodman with NJ.com as well. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you think this team has one of the better starting staffs in the league. I'm curious, mm. just overall, what do you think the Yankees are capable of this year with the other offseason moves that they've made as well? Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're capable of definitely having a, a, a deep October run. You know what I mean? That's obviously the goal. That's why we play this game is to 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 win championships and to go deep into October. And I think obviously I think this team is definitely capable adding adding Soto to this lineup. Uh I've talked about Soto openly in the past before. I, I arguably I think he's the best hitter in baseball. I think him and Judge are arguably one, two, um, top three, four, five guys in baseball, you know what I mean? Depending on how you wanna depending on how you wanna cut it. But Judges, I'm, I'm I'm thankful to be Judge's teammate. If I, if I take Judge's numbers out against my numbers in my career, I'd probably have like a lot closer to a three, probably ERA, to be honest with you. So it's good to have him on my side. And then competing against Soto, man, I mean, he's incredible. I mean, I've I've faced some 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 good hitters, man. But I always tell everyone that Soto's the best hitter I've ever faced. Just his his knowledge of the strike zone is is second to none. He probably knows a baller strike better than the umpire does. And then his ability to just fire on pitches in the zone, his his pitch recognition. He's just different, man. He's different. So I, I can't imagine starters or pitchers having to face so to and judge back to back. That's gonna cause a little bit of a little bit of stress, definitely, within the minds of of some pitchers having to face those two guys. So yeah, the team is dynamic. And then you have a bunch of young guys around the staff. Like I said, Cole is is Cy Young, if not Cy Young candidate each and every year, Rodon, when he's right, arguably the same. And then Nestor, like I said, he's another guy who can perform incredibly well. And then I truly think Clark Schmidt is going to be a guy for many, many years in this league. Um, once he fine tunes the little things, his, his repertoire is incredible. And he's got some big, big, big time stuff. So I think Clark Schmidt is going to be, he's going to end up being a guy for us or, or, a guy in this league for many, many years. Thank you. We'll take yep. a few more if there are any. We got Gary Phillips in queue. Go ahead, Gary, again. Hey, Marcus, just as a ground ball sinker guy, how closely did you look at and analyze the Yankees' infield defense, and how much did the guys that are in place there factor into your decision? Um, I mean, you're aware. I'm aware. You're aware. Um, obviously you're aware of every, of every team of the guys kind of that play at each position. So, um, I feel like my, my sinkers, one of the most elite sinkers in the league when I'm throwing it to my best ability. So if you have anyone who's decent, or if you even have guys, obviously you have gold glovers out there. Um, that's always a plus, but I'm not someone who looked greatly into it. Like I said, but I'm also someone who is very aware of the guys um, who are behind there. And I know that um those guys are gonna have no problem converting double plays and ranging and being able to get to balls um in the infield thank you uh we'll take a final one brian hope you just raised your hand go ahead 
Hey, Marcus, I uh, saw you wore a Yankee hat to the garden the other night. Uh, how quickly did you run out and buy a Yankee hat once you signed? I was in the city for a few days. You know, I was up for my physical, so I was just mobbing around the city. Um, I'm in a fashion, so I'm always shopping. So kind of just swung by Kith and picked up a hat. Uh, obviously grew up with a bunch of New York Yankee hats in my rotation, but playing on different teams, you're not, you know, can't really don those in the off season. Um, so yeah, just very, very thankful to, to, to be a Yankee. I feel like the Yankee hat is a fashion icon in itself, even separate from, from MLB. So excited to have it in the rotation now. Thank you. Marcus, we appreciate you, uh, taking the time and pausing from your, uh, your move. So uh, again, thanks and congratulations and uh, obviously see you in person uh, in less than a month. So thanks. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. See you guys soon.